Testing, testing, can you hear me? Yep. Hi, my name is Max here, and I am welcoming you to a heartbeat Alaska from the, from the edge of the eyes at Barrow, Alaska, and a whole crew of Sun, Sun Crew. And then I watch Heartbeat Alaska. Is that all? Maybe, maybe we do it uh, one more time, just do the same thing. Uh, I forgot what I said. <laughs> 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 Hi, my name is Max Hayak. I'm saying welcome you to Hartfield, Alaska, from Barrow, Alaska, from the whaling crew of Sahana Edward Talks crew. And we watch Hartfield, Alaska. Hartfield, Alaska will be right back. Thanks for watching. Ready? Yep. Hello, my name is Bill Ita. I'm a harpooner for Edward Ita's crew, Sound Crew. Welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. I'd like to say hello to all my friends in the state of Alaska, class of 1974. Roll is when uh, there's a whale on the water. So I was like, like maybe you could just uh, show me the harpoon and tell me like what you would do, uh, you know, if there was a whale out there right now, or what would happen. Uh, Pretty hard to say. Wait. So I understand you you sit up there and you kind of once the boat's in the water you're kind of in charge of the boat. Well, let's go to the hard piece of the left. Just have you uh, say your name out loud. For me, go ahead. Okay. Hello, my name is Bill Ita, the harpooner for Sound Crew up here in Barrow, Alaska. Yeah. Now, uh, tell me about uh, you've got two different harpoons here. What what is each? What are each one of this one one of these used for? Okay, can you get back a little, or is that okay? What's that? Right now? Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> right. We're what we have here is uh, uh, this is the darting gun here, and there's an explosive in here, uh, which has a uh, uh, four. I think my brother uses about a four to five second fuse in there. That's how much time. Once this hits the whale right here, it uh, sets off a trigger in here. And uh, 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 once this uh, harpoon gets into the whale about that much, it presses this one in. And it uh, sets off the trigger and the bomb goes off. And uh, 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 I've been... Uh, this is my second year as a harpooner. Uh, it took me about uh, just about all my life uh, uh, busting my back, um, uh, learning, watching, especially from the elders, from uh, especially uh, uh, that one year at the Alaska Eskimo Whaling Commission. Jonathan Aiken had a. Uh, kill efficiency program that really helped out in uh, 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 whaling. Um, he's kind of my hero, Jonathan Aiken, and he, he's uh, a really good harpoon, uh, one of the best harpooners that I know. Uh, last year, <coughs> um, we caught a 41-foot whale, and we were blessed with it, but anyway, once you throw the harpoon, this here, it, it takes just a few seconds for this, about 25 feet of rope to, once you penetrate the whale, the bomb goes off. You just have a few seconds to make sure you're clear from all this line over here. And uh, 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 we are always told to uh, uh, throw the, uh, the, Weapon right, right where it needs to be hit, not anywhere else, uh, like just on the body. But 
Uh, it can be very dangerous if uh, you slip and fall. You got to be very careful and uh, to be awake and uh, especially uh, uh, when you're uh, being uh, shoved off into the, uh, like, for instance, a whale comes up a few feet. It just takes, you only have two or three, three or four seconds to uh, to strike a whale if it comes up in front of your boat. And, uh, now, uh, are you in a place where you could demonstrate, like, how you hold the harpoon when you're about to throw it? Or is that okay, uh, like the whale is coming up go up there like this and just grab it up and then just throw it as hard as you can right where it needs to be hit. Yeah. And uh, the other weapon that you have here is the uh, uh, shoulder gun. Hey, you could explain to me how that works. Uh, soon as uh, this uh, harpoon is thrown and the, the rope, uh, just a few seconds later, uh, the gunner, our gunner is Max Aguirre, and he would be right here in uh, just a second or two after we throw the harpoon, and he'd uh, throw the, I mean, uh, shoot the gun also at the same time. Very good. Anything else that you'd like to add about the, the role of the harpooner? The, once the boat's in the water, are you kind of in charge of the boat? Or you, do you tell them where? To... No, the uh, the uh, the guy in charge would be. Uh, they say the old people always say the guy who's uh, the guy who's uh, on the back rudder in the boat is the one that who catches the whale. He's the one that uh, decides when to shove it or to. Uh, Veer around out there in the water. The, I've heard the elders say that is, it is the uh, the guy who is running the boat on the back that is that will lead the harpooner to the well. And uh, uh, this year we we're going to be training um, my nephew who's right over there to start harpooning because. My back's giving up. <laughs> now, uh, as a harpooner, your job is fairly dangerous, right? It, it is very dangerous. You just got to be very careful. And uh, 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 I, it's, uh, I think a uh, harpooner uh, needs to be uh, 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 awake and be awake. Uh. <laughs> okay, what could go wrong is um, uh, when you overshoot a um, a whale. Like if it if you uh, come right up to it and gets right under, it could rattle rattle your boat, which uh, uh, we've never done before. But it's uh, I've known that. Boat, uh, whales do hit boats and uh, uh, just need to be very careful. That is why we have a, a, a knife ready right up in the front to cut anything off that gets snagged on uh, anything or um, uh, anything on the boat. Over there. So you can see it go over there. Oh, okay, I got you. I'll, so you start talking, I'll swing back over to you. Okay. All right, go ahead. <clears throat> no, you're supposed to go over there and uh, get a shot at the front. All right. You need to walk over there. Hello, my name is Bill Itta. I'm a harpooner for Edward Itta's crew up here in Barrow. I'd like to say hello to Heartbeat Alaska, to all my friends, and especially to 
The people in Fort Yukon. Hello. We'll be right back. Okay, stay there for just a second. Let me get a. Let me just let me have you look out there. Let me get a, just a shot of you sitting there. Hi, my name is Stephen Ballard Watson. My independent name is Kalika. This is my uncle Edward Crew Shagan. We're down about seven miles from Hollywood, waiting for whales. Uh, I'd like to say hello to all my friends all over Alaska. Watch Heartbeat Alaska. And Stephen Ballard Watson. Hi, my name is Stephen Ballot Watson. My Inupiaq name is Kalika. This is my uncle Edward's wedding crew, Sagan. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, go ahead and just say, uh, I watch Heartbeat Alaska. <laughs> and I watch Heartbeat Alaska. safe to walk on and we have a hook on this side there's a hook on the one one end of it so if you fall through you can use this to keep yourself from sinking and you use the hook to pull yourself out of the, out of the water uh, so that's uh, one of the, uh, the tools that we use when we're out walking on the ice just to make sure that we're walking on safe ice we call it a walking stick
Caucasus, uh, the average temperature is between 40 to 70, so it's perfect up here. And I love it in the summertime. I get to see birds and mammals and jump into the ocean. Water temperature is about 28 degrees. I love it. And in the winter time, you know, uh, January and February is an awesome time to come up and look for the lights. And whenever the the, uh, uh, the clouds are open, we'll come out here in the evening and check out the northern lights and see what we can find. We'll go out to the point, look for polar bears. It's the best time to come up, January, February. Yeah. So, the uh, might work since all. Did I have you uh, say your name and spell it yesterday? What's that? Uh, did I have you say your name and spell it yesterday? Uh, I don't think you have. Okay, I'll go ahead and just say it out loud. Uh, it's Bunna. B U N N A. All right, and your last name? Edwardson, E D W A R D S O N. And uh, your title is what, tour guide? Tour guide, tour extraordinaire, whatever, polar bear club member, you know, all of the above. Yeah. And uh, well, first of all, tell me a little bit about uh, what you do. You, you take people out that haven't been up here before? and Well, uh, people that come up here and locals in town, we, we pick them up in the airport wherever they need to go, and we go out to Point Barrow to look for polar bears and we spend a couple hours out there just have a good old time in my van. Mm -hmm. Look for animals, bears, uh, seals, birds especially. He was bird watching uh, places up here all over the all over the tundra. Coming up, slowly becoming a gold mine for birding and bird watching season is just coming up when all this tundra melts here. Mm -hmm. I love it. Well, what are some of the the common things that uh, you wind up having to explain to people when they get in your... Well, one of the biggest misconceptions about uh, Barrow and us in Eskimo is that we live in igloos, but I tell them, everybody, every single person that lives up here lives in an igloo because it means house. Another misconception is that we rub noses. We never rub noses. And also, you know, when we're heading out to, to the point, I just tell them all about polar bears and, and the surrounding area and the history about this place. And if they have any questions, we'll, we'll answer them. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that's, uh, I'm sure, hard for folks to understand is the whole light, dark thing. That does get a little hard at times to explain, uh, especially people that come from lower 48s. You know, I tell them in the, in the wintertime we have 65 days where you don't see the sun. That gets to them right there. They can't imagine that. And I tell them that's what drives most people out in the, in the wintertime. This place is not for everybody. But I tell them you can't have the sweet without the sour. You know, if you have 65 days of darkness, we have 86 days of sunlight, just like this. Just like this, 3 o'clock in the morning in the summertime, 86 days straight. I love that, too. Yeah. And, uh, well, tell me the, a brief bit about, uh, about the history. Well, uh, this place, we've been here for many thousands of years. There's a, a, a settlement out at the point called Nuuk, and we lived out there. And Ukpialgavik is just right down, down the bluff here. We settled around that area, and we, this was a permanent habitat, and we lived inside homes all year long. When we followed the animals, we built the snow igloo out there, especially the caribou and the fish. And uh, we've just been here for many thousand years, and we love it. You know, this is our home, our playground. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, yesterday you got uh, a few questions about uh, whale hunting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, first of all, uh, tell me how you catch a whale. Well, uh, obviously, we don't use 20-pound tests, that's for sure. But what we do is we go out there to the edge of the ice. You can see the edge of the ice out there. And all of our 51 crews will set up their camps out there at the edge of the ice with their equipment, their tent, their boats, both an umiak or a skin boat and, a, and an alumina boat with a motor. And uh, they set up in different locations. And since we have our umiaks, we cannot go chase after every whale that we see. We have to wait for a whale to give itself to us. So once the uh, crew members are waiting by the boat and they see a whale come to us, they'll jump in the water and we'll paddle out towards, towards the whale and we'll take it with our hand-thrown harpoon. We have to get within about five feet of the whale. It's quite a rush. And after the whale is taken, what we do is we tow the whale from the kill site to the campsite and then we anchor a, a number of blocking tackles or pulleys onto the ice and we pull the whale out of the water by hand. It takes up to 150 people and up to 12 hours just to pull it out of the water. And once it's on top of the ice, we continue to butcher the whale. That takes up to another 12 hours right there. And every single person that goes out to help, you know, they don't have to, uh, they don't get paid with money. They get paid with food. It's subsistence lifestyle. Uh-huh. Uh and, uh, let's see. A town, there's, Barrow's just like a regular town, but on a much smaller basis. 
Um, inside of town, there's a monument out there inside of town with Real Rogers and Wally Post. They crashed 16 miles down the coast. And at the actual crash site, we have two, two stone monuments. There's a monument inside of town, a memorial. And we go to the high schools, uh, the elementary school, the middle school, the junior high, and we just do a quick city tour. We take a break at the AC store. And our prices are mostly double than what they get back home. So I take them to the AC store just so they can take pictures of our prices. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, if somebody in the lower 48 is watching this video, how would you explain to them uh, how isolated Barrow is? Well, you can only get here by plane. And if you're going to drive up here, uh, you can only do that about one week out of the year. And you have to have a re reliable 4x4 vehicle or, you know, just come up by plane. Alaska Airlines is the only carrier in and out, in or out of here. Uh, we have our own, we're completely self-sufficient. Our water comes from the ocean. Our heat and gas electricity comes from the ground with natural gas. We are pretty isolated, but we're completely self-sufficient up here. Mm. I love it. Yeah. And uh, if someone was to go into a typical home in Barrow, is it? Is a it typical to... home in Barrow would be just like any, any other typical home in, uh, in America, except with the exception of what's in our freezers and our fridges, our native food, you know, muck tuck or whale, caribou fish, whatever. But it's just like any other American home. We have a TV and Nintendo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know one potential audience for this video might be uh, uh, Native, Native Americans that live on other reservations in the lower 48 that might be hiring UIC to do some sort right. of work. Right, right. Um, can you compare what it's like to uh, live in Barrow with what it might be like um, on the reservation? Well, I really can't answer that honestly because I've never been down in and around in a reservation, so I really can't only answer that. Fair enough. But there are uh, some different things as far as, like, like this isn't a reservation. This right. Is, maybe you could explain uh, that aspect of, of things just a little bit as how, how the town is set up and maybe a, a bit, if you can give me the, the nickel explanation of uh, the Native Land Claim Settlement Act. I've not really studied up into that. Okay, that's cool. Uh -huh. yeah. So probably not going to touch on that too. Right. Much, didn't know if you had. Yeah, talk about the, the polar bear problem. Well, this Arctic Ocean, this is the best spot to jump into the ocean because it's, it's authentic. You know, it's the Arctic. This is where polar bears live. But the temperature, when the o o ice opens up, the temperature of the water reaches 28 degrees. That's well below freezing. At the warmest, at the hottest, it's about 42 degrees. Uh, so come up here, bring a bathing suit, we'll, we'll provide towels, and we'll jump into the ocean. When you jump into the ocean, we'll give you a certificate of patch and bragging rights. <laughs> but uh, you have to be very, very healthy to jump in this ocean. It's very cold. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me turn this way. Just Tell me about the, real quickly, about the different uh, subsistence seasons that... Uh, Okay, uh, this, uh, we have two spring, uh, two whaling seasons, spring whaling and fall whaling. That's when we do all of our bowhead whale hunts. Uh, in the summertime, in the late summers, we're gonna catch all of our fish. And the early summers, when this ice is broken up, uh, floating out to sea, that's when we go out seal hunting and walrus hunting. And duck hunting is late summer, you know. And we, for employees, we can cash in subsistence leave. It's just like cashing in uh, sick leave or vacation leave. You know, you cash in and go hunting fill up your freezer for the winter. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what sort of fish do you get here? Do you get salmon this morning? We get uh, pink and coho salmon. We get whitefish, shefish, char, cod, you know, arctic cod, gray lens. You can go inland, catch some she uh, shefish, some burbot, lake pike, lake trout. You know, this is a pretty good uh, fishing place, but it's all subsistence for our own use. Uh, so, uh, and uh, a lot of the stuff that uh, you get in town, do you get barges in here? We get up, our barge season is, is August, uh, part of September when all this ice is gone. They have a two and a half month window for to get all of our heavy equipment, vehicles, building equipment, you know, fuel especially up here in, and during the barge season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see. I think that's about it. Maybe the uh, last thing I can think is maybe you could uh, give me a little explanation about, uh, like, pretend we were looking at a map. Mm -hmm. of, of uh, the North Slope. Maybe you could uh, kind of explain where Barrow is, maybe how it wound up being here. Well, if you were to look on a map of Alaska, the North Slope, all you have to do to find Barrow is find the most pointy point. 
it looks like a little tip or a little arrow up on top. If you get a little closer, you'll notice that barrel, uh, the most of barrel is on land, but then we have a very narrow spit heading out to Pero. It's about four miles away from the city is the actual point. Once you get up to the actual point, you know, you're the farthest north person in the whole North America. And we go out there. We can't go out there today because of the, the conditions, but once you get out there, you know, it's awesome. It's pretty, it's pretty neat. It's also the spot of the great big old anchor that the military tried to use to free those whales in 88. Those gray whales, remember that? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess that's, that's about it. Anything else that uh, you can think of? I'll uh, bring a bathing suit. I don't know. Just come up, have a good time, give us a call. We'll take care of you. Well, uh -huh. cool. Ouch. Ouch. There's so many ducks out there. I'm gonna be out there in about an hour. I'll go say hello.